but it's just not waste it's just not wasting any time or energy. It's all about what makes you reflect that each and every day. It's time for another edition of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here at the Star in Frisco. The coach joins us from Ford Center as the Cowboys get set to take on the 2-0 Seattle Seahawks, a 325 kickoff on the road in Seattle. Coach will break down the Seahawks in just a little bit, but let's get things started with that uh, first win last Sunday against the Atlanta Falcons. Do it in dramatic fashion. I want to ask you about the scene in the locker room after the game, though, and uh, you've won a lot of games in your career. How special was, it? was this one? I know the players gave you a game ball after the game. Oh, it was definitely special. Uh, it, was, it was a great, great locker room atmosphere. I mean, just the, the enthusiasm from, you know, obviously when Greg hit the kick and just all the way in. Uh, you know, it's a big win for us, and it, we, we needed to we needed to find a way to to win a football game early in in, in this season, and and that definitely checked the box. So, and hey, uh, you know, you don't get a, you don't get a game ball very often, so it'll definitely always be a special a special victory. How about winning a game in that fashion, the way the team uh, came back? Uh, can it, can there be a carryover effect from that? Well, we're gonna we're gonna definitely you know try to build off it. There's no question about it. I mean, it, it's. It's all part of improving each and every week, and it, it, there's there's so much, you know, so much room for improvement. Uh, but but at the end of the day, you have to find a way to win, especially these early season games. More games are are lost by a team uh, because of the you know the things you just you're not in sync in, in certain areas, and you know, I mean the, the way we had the ball on the ground, we had the ball on the ground six times in the first 15 plays. So to be able to recover from that as a football team. Is, is a tremendous statement about our players and their ability to just keep fighting, stay in there. And, and, and something that I've, I spent a lot of time talking with, with the quarterbacks and, and, you know, and Kellen and Doug, you have, to get, you have to be comfortable and confident of winning a game on the last play because that's, that's what this National Football League is, is all about. There's so many games you see week in and week out that come down to that last play. And we spend a lot of time in our preparation on final place situation and scenario so I uh, was just just really thankful that that the players got a, got got an opportunity to experience that especially with all the preparation that's gone into it and John Fossil talked about the uh, onside kick uh, he calls it the watermelon kick and he talked about working on things in practice that's something that he said that you've worked on the last three Saturdays in uh, in practice is it as was it as successful in practice as it was in the game you know you know you actually Greg's very consistent with it so um, and it's it you was know, something that John does a great job of, of teaching, and, and, and they've definitely mastered. You know, um, when he was in LA last year, they actually did it against the Cowboys last year, and it just barely went out of bounds. So I've seen the clip of that. Um, but yeah, it's it's unique. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's it's a play that our you know the whole the coverage unit, you know, starting with the kick, was very well executed. And after that, uh, Dak hits C.D. Lamb and runs a great route. You know, C.D. had six catches for over 100 yards in that game, but I thought it was a veteran move by him as he went downfield. He knew he was in field goal range, doesn't go out of bounds, and the idea is you're going to run the clock and not give the Falcons the ball back there in the final two minutes. A veteran move by him. Uh, definitely. Just a heads-up play, smart football, you know, everybody understanding the, the situation there. And, and like you said, it was an excellent route. You know, the protection was outstanding. Dak was able to step up and, and convert it, and, and CD did a great job staying in bounds. All right, we're going to talk a lot about these Seattle Seahawks later here on the Mike McCarthy Show. But up next, it's David Moore of the Dallas Morning News. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, is brought to you by AT&T. Ford, visit your local Ford dealer. Built for Texas, built for you. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And by Reliant, an NRG company. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. 
Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here at the Star in Frisco. Now joined by David Moore, not of the Seattle Seahawks. It's David Moore from the <laughs> Dallas Morning News, SportsDayDFW.com. His namesake, the Cowboys are going up against uh, this week. All right. David, let me ask you right off the bat, the game that the Cowboys won over the Falcons last week, can there be a carryover effect against Seattle? I think it can. I mean, statistically, it only counts one game in the standings. But I think during a season, you can go back and you can look at certain games and say that that game instilled a, a confidence or, or a swagger or infused a team with some energy that maybe it didn't have that had a carryover effect. That was certainly the type of victory that could do that. Now, the thing is, you don't know until after the fact, but the way the Cowboys came back in that game, uh, arguably the most improbable victory they've ever had in franchise history, that can have a carryover effect. I think the first time you have the chance to see whether or not it impacted beyond just one game in the standings, will be this weekend when they go to Seattle to play the Seahawks. You know, I put that game up uh, in my top five favorite comeback victories ever in uh, the 60-year history of this Cowboys uh, franchise. Let me ask you about the fans, an announced attendance of greater than 21,000. How do you think it worked with the fans at the stadium? Uh, the, the Cowboys, they don't have the league's best record, but they are leading the league in pandemic uh, fan pandemic fans at the moment. Uh, largest crowd yet so far. Uh, seemed very responsible. I mean, it looked at a lot of the uh, uh, luxury suites. Those were filled. You looked out in the stands. I thought it was uh, very well proportioned how they were throughout uh, the stadium. It was, I, I can tell you, I was in LA and it was so much louder than what it was in LA. Of course, there were no fans there, but then it was just totally uh, silent during the timeouts and, and the TV timeouts and the breaks. Uh, I, I thought the Cowboys did a really good job of continuing the game day presentation on the board and the continual use of sound throughout the game, even when there were breaks. It, it much more replicated uh, games you're used to attending than what took place in, in LA where there were no fans there. And there will be no fans in Seattle this weekend either. And uh, the Cowboy fans are just hoping that David Moore of the Dallas Morning News has a better day on Sunday than David Moore of the Seattle Seahawks. We appreciate it, <laughs> David. And up Perhaps next the only you. time people wish that, but yes, <laughs> yes thank that's you. That's right. <laughs> up next on the Mike McCarthy Show, how about we meet Dalton Schultz, who had a huge day against the Falcons last week. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. The Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, continues now. Bill Jones inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here at the Star in Frisco, getting you set for the Cowboys and the Seahawks, a 325 kickoff on Sunday. But let's take a look back at last week's win over Atlanta, and namely one Dalton Schultz. Rob Phillips profiles the Cowboys' tight end. Without Blake Jarwin, Dalton Schultz is next man up at the tight end position. So far, he has delivered. The Cowboys lost a unique dimension in their passing game when Jarwin tore his ACL in a week one loss to the Rams. In last Sunday's remarkable comeback win over the Falcons, Schultz answered the call with a career high nine catches for 88 yards and his first NFL touchdown catch. After a couple drops last week, I was making sure I was on the jugs Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday after practice. Um, and so I, I knew I was ready for that, for that, you know, workload. And, um, you know, I, I, I felt like it was, it was my job to kind of step up when we needed it. The Cowboys had high hopes for Jarwin as the new starter this year, replacing the franchise's all-time leading receiver, Jason Witten. Paired with Pro Bowl running back Ezekiel Elliott and a talented trio at wide receiver, Jarwin would have created even more matchup problems with his ability to separate downfield. Now Schultz has that opportunity in his third season. In training camp, he spoke about a better comfort level with the offense and better timing with quarterback Dak Prescott. That was evident in week two, catching nine of 10 targets from Prescott. 
something to build on moving forward. I'm not the game planner, so obviously, you know, we'll, we'll attack how, however we want to attack that week. But, you know, when my name's called, I'm, I'm always ready for it. Dalton Schultz studied a lot of game tape of Jason Witten when he was at Stanford as a star tight end, trying to become a complete player at the position. The Cowboys need another big game from him Sunday against a talented Seahawks secondary that features star safety Jamal Adams. For DallasCowboys.com, I'm Rob Phillips. Cowboys looking for more of the same from Dalton Schultz this week against the Seahawks. And as far as Seattle's offense goes, Russell Wilson is off to a great start this year. He's got a ton of weapons on offense. Will McClay breaks it down. It's brought to you by a Windstar. Today we're going to take a look at the Seattle Seahawks offense, and in particular, Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, and Tyler Lockett. First, we're going to take a look at DK Metcalf. We have him shattered up at the top. He's 6'3", 230 pounds, and runs a 4'3", outside receiver he's going to stretch the field so we'll take a look at him here have him highlighted quarterback sees single high russell's going to move the safety with his eyes and he sees one-on-one -on -one. he's going to take a deep shot and there's big speed and a big play now we're going to take one more look at dk metcalf and what he does and how they use him he's going to be in the slot here he's highlighted it's going to be man coverage he's got the best coverage guy in the league the defensive mvp last year they're going to single him up. He's going to run a double move here. They're not going to try and run the tricky routes. They're going to run quick one cut routes. He's going to bend it in. He's going to take it over the top. And then we look at the accuracy of Russell Wilson's deep ball and a great contested catch by Metcalf for another big play. Now we're going to take a look at another Seahawks weapon, Tyler Lockett. But we're also going to take a look at how they use personnel as well as DJ Metcalf's vertical speed to get Lockett open across the field. Here they have 12 personnel, two tight ends. Now they're going to use Lockett to go uh, across the field, but pull the defender away with single high using the speed of DK Metcalf, opening up a window and a strong throw by the quarterback. Next two clips here, we're going to take a look at Lockett in the red zone, but also going to take a look at just the magic of Russell Wilson in the pocket. Okay, first look. There's Lockett at the top of the screen. It's in the red zone. They're going to get motion. He sees single high. Lockett's going to run his route, freeze at the top. There's going to be pressure. Wilson's going to avoid it and then find his target in the red zone. Now we're going to take an end zone look at the last clip. And what it's going to show is Russell Wilson's ability to avoid pressure, but also keep his eyes up and find the receiver. See the motion here. Now, he go, he's going the other way, pressure, keeps his eyes up field, and then a dart to the receiver in the end zone for a touchdown. These are the weapons the Seattle Seahawks have and what we have to contend with to get a victory in Seattle. All right, thanks, Will. And up next on the Mike McCarthy Show, the coach rejoins us and we break down the Seattle defense and safety Jamal Adams. When you go against a quarterback who's playing at as high a level as Russell Wilson is, is it natural you kind of gauge where you are compared to the other top guys in the league in a game like this or not? Is that out of your mind completely? No, that's out of my mind. Uh, I've got all the faith in my defense going out there and doing their job, but for me it's about staying focused in on um, what the Seattle Seahawks defense is going to give us, the way that we execute against that. Uh, and that's the, I mean, that's the premier focus and the only focus uh, within a game plan, no matter who the quarterback is. Is it playing against Russell Wilson? He's Russell Wilson. Uh, he can he can do a lot. Uh, he can do it all. He can run, pass. Um, as we all know, he's most efficient. He's most efficient and uh, most dangerous when he's outside of the the pocket. Um, so we're gonna have to spend a lot of time this week, um, you know, just preparing to uh, try to keep him in the pocket as much as we can. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. It's the Cowboys and the Seahawks, a 325 kickoff in Seattle. Let's uh, talk about the Seahawks on offense. Russell Wilson is playing at a very high level. Five touchdown passes a week ago to five different receivers against the Patriots. There was a great deep ball. There, there's not much that Russell Wilson can't do, right, Coach? Oh, I agree. Uh, he, he's on fire right now. If you just you know watch the throws that you've already commented on against New England, and you know you played it. At extremely high level the week before at you know at Atlanta, so uh, their their offense is putting up a ton of points, uh, big play big play points too. So Russell is is obviously dangerous out of the pocket, but uh, he's he's doing a great job. This is the best I've seen him play. 
Yeah, and you know there, there are similarities between Dak and, and Russell Wilson. I want to ask you about Dak though, and uh, the the comeback last week. He had such an incredible second half in the game. What was the most impressive though to you about uh, Dak in that game a week ago? Uh, Dak never blinked. I mean, it's 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 tough. I mean, whether you know you're playing or you're calling plays. I mean, when, when you when you have you know a sequence that we had during the first series, uh, the ability just to not press and just just to stay the course. Uh, he did a great job managing the game. Um, you know, he threw for over 70% completion percentage. He, he dealt the ball all day and just stayed the course. And, and that's exactly what needed to happen there. So great leadership and, and you know, his steadiness was, was key to the victory. All right, what about going up against this Seattle defense? Of course, uh, when, when an offense comes to the line of scrimmage, the offensive line, they, they, are, they, they, they see where that middle linebacker is. And Bobby Wagner is one of the best guys in the league. But do you also have to, with the Seattle defense, also have to figure out where's Jamal Adams, number 33, too? Definitely. Um, Jamal's made an impact quickly. Uh, you can see it in, in the first two games. He's, he's their premier pressure player. Uh, he, you know, he plays with his hair on fire. Uh, I have great respect for Bobby. I've, I've seen him you know, compete against the, those guys numerous of times, and, he, and, he, and I agree with you. He, he's a great player. He's the key to the middle of that defense, still making plays sideline to sideline, but those are two key focus players for us. What about uh, your defense, and, and what are you seeing through two games, and, and where, where does the improvement really need to come from right now? Uh, the improvement needs to come in the details. We, you know, we're, we're not clean on, on certain aspects, and, and that's something that we will correct. And it has to correct because, you know, our guys are playing with great energy. Uh, we tackled very well uh, against the Falcons that, you know, didn't have any missed tackles. So, you know, that, that's that's a big step for us from week one to week two. Uh, got our hands again on on a couple balls. That we, you know, we didn't we didn't we didn't get the takeaways. So uh, I just want to see us take a step uh, in the areas of fundamentals and, 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 and just we got we got we got to clean up the pre snap mistakes that we're making. It was a big pickup in the preseason getting Everson Griffin, who's had such success in Minnesota. He had a big sack late in that game against the Falcons. How, how is Everson fitting in? Oh, he's fitting in very well. He plays with tremendous juice. You, you can see you know, with him arriving late, he's, he's getting comfortable. Uh, just you know, what we're asking him to do in, in this defense, but uh, he's a great addition. And when, you look at, when you're facing a guy like Russell Wilson, what's the key against him? Well, I mean, you, you want to say keep him in the pocket, but he, you know, he he does such a good, you know, his pocket awareness and, and presence and his instincts to step out through the air, B gap. You know, traditionally he used to spin out around, you know, around the C gap was his first move, but he he's playing very well, stepping up and getting out. So, you know, I would say clearly, try, you know, keep him in the pocket, try trying to make him beat you from the pocket, and you know, frankly, when we do get a chance to hit him, we gotta we gotta take the ball away. So, uh, you know, he's a dynamic player that that looks to extend plays and, and, and sometimes gives you an opportunity to strip the ball. All right. The Mike McCarthy Show continues in a moment. We wrap things up in just a moment. And we got to get the ball back for our offense. Um, our whole objective this week is keep Russell in the pocket and don't let him scramble. And we have to do that by, you know, getting back there, generating pressure. Final couple of minutes here of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. It's the Cowboys and the Seahawks. And Coach Brian Schottenheimer is the offensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks. You know him very well. In fact, uh, Brian has said uh, you had as much impact as anyone on his coaching career. But I want to ask you about Brian's dad. Of course, you uh, coached for Marty Schottenheimer with the Chiefs, broke into the NFL with him with the Chiefs uh, back in the 90s. What kind of impact did Marty Schottenheimer have on your career? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today without, Matt, without Marty and Pat Schottenheimer. I mean, Marty gave me my first opportunity in 1993. Um, a lot of things that I do today, as far as, you know, the foundation of how a program is built and sustained is, is, is a reflection of my time with Marty Schottenheimer. He's the most detailed, organized, uh, strong-willed coach that I, that I have ever been around. So I can't say enough about him and his family. And I uh, think the world of Brian. Brian's done a phenomenal job. He's an, you know, an outstanding coach. We had a chance to work together in the 90s when he was getting started in the NFL. So I have a lot of love for the Schottenheimer family. All right. The uh, Seahawks at 2-0 and on the season. They're off to a good start. The Cowboys looking for their second win. Good luck up there in Seattle, Coach. And we appreciate all of you for joining us here on the Mike McCarthy Show. We will see you again next week. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, was brought to you by... 
Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Built for Texas. Built for you. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass.